If you're a guitar player, then you'll know of the importance of looking after your nails. Well-shaped nails can mean a really nice sound, and if they're in bad condition, you can get the most horrendous sound. There's no one right way of doing this. Some players have short nails, some shape them, some use artificial nails. It's even possible to use bits of ping pong balls. And yeah, I guess it's kind of the same texture. I play mostly nylon string classical guitar. So in this video, we're gonna look at the way I shape my nails and the reason why as well. I do just want to say that this is not just gonna be a compilation of me looking after my nails. It's more to explain the finger movements in guitar playing and why it's necessary to actually look after our nails in the first place. I must have said nails about a hundred times already. So let's move on, forget about that, and let's start talking about the guitar. So first things first, I'm sure you know, the guitar is a plucked instrument. And that means that the sound comes from us pulling and releasing the string, causing it to vibrate. The energy of the vibrating string is transferred into the bridge, into the body of the guitar, and then the sound exits through the sound hole, giving us the sound that we can then hear. It makes a lovely sound when done correctly, but it isn't exactly plain sailing. First of all, we have to get a clean movement in the string. We can't simply move the string any way we like and let the guitar take care of the rest. If we attack the string too much, we'll get a clicky, snappy kind of sound. And if we let our fingers slide along the string, then it will sound all whispery. So why even use nails at all if it's gonna cause such a problem? We could just use our fleshy fingertips, and this is fine for most people. Most finger style players will cut their nails and just use their fingertips as well as lots of lute and early music players. But for the classical guitar, we really need something else to give us that clear projected sound. So here's what I'm actually doing. And again, everyone is different, so this is just what works for me. Each time I play the string, I'm placing this corner between the nail and the fingertip on the string and then using the nail as a ramp. You see, in order to maximize the sound and to get a loud, clear sound, I want the string to be moving slightly up and down away from the fretboard as well as just side to side. So the nail acts as a ramp to encourage this movement and to give us that loud, clear sound. Secondly, by shaping my nails, I can be sure of a consistent texture across all my fingers. Of course, the fingers are different lengths and they have to reach the string at different angles. So the nails give me an opportunity to make sure each finger is set up to provide an equal sound. Otherwise, the music might have this unevenness to it. So what do we need to do to actually get this kind of ramp? Well, in terms of length, I like to have a little bit of nail showing just beyond the fingertip. But remember, not too much, because we want to be making contact with the string on this corner between the flesh and the nail. So just enough that we can see the ramp, but not so much that we're no longer playing with the fingertip. The length, I think, should be pretty consistent across all the fingers, but I have seen people achieve really nice sounds with all different kinds of lengths, so you'll have to experiment to see what works best for you. But it's the shape of the nail which is really important, which is why guitarists will say that they shape them rather than just grow them. I like to have a little bit less on this side, so again, I can pluck the string with this corner, and then the string will glide along the nail like a ramp. Remember, I'm still actually making contact with the string on the fingertip. It's just that the nail helps with a consistent and clear sound. You may want to have a little bit more nail towards this side of the finger so you can extend the ramp further. And it tends to be that the index finger has the steepest ramp because of the placement and shape of the finger. And then as you move away to the middle and the ring finger, the ramp is slightly flattened. Finally, let's talk about the texture. We want the nail to be really smooth so that it can glide along the string. If there's any roughness to it, it just sounds awful, so it needs to be really smooth. I use this selection of fine sandpaper, and it's really fine, but it's a really good way of making sure that the nail is clean and it gets rid of any roughness under the nail as well as along the edge. I know people really hate the idea of having long nails. They don't need to be too long. These are as long as I have mine. I normally have them a bit shorter. But what's important is that you keep them really clean and really smooth, and you just have a little bit of a ramp just to help with that consistency of the sound. Thanks very much for watching. If you'd like to know more about getting a really nice sound with the guitar, then these are the videos to watch. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.